Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is uh, Electronics with a Drink. As you might as well know, I already did uh, Series 1 Episode 4 and it covered the Arduino platform working on an ESP8266 with uh, interfacing through the Cayenne uh, platform. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to, to go back and, and look at something that a lot of people have also run into with the the ESP8266, the 07s, and the 12 platform, uh, which sometimes they run out of pins for uh, digital uh, input output. Um, what I wanted to cover is uh, the ESP8266 uh, version 1. Uh, there's a good article on the Instructables. I will put the article uh, location in the comments down below. But it covers the use of the transmit and receive pinouts for uh, GPIO use. And it, it came to my attention that I don't think anybody's really done this on the uh, 07 and 12 E and F. So I went ahead and tried it and it works quite well. So right now if you see on the bench I've got three different relays. Each one of these relays is connected to a different GPIO pin. So we've got GPIO 1, uh, 3, and 4. 4 is the original one that we used off of the actual controller that we built uh, earlier this week. And if you see here, I don't have my transmit and receive plugged in. Now that being said, uh, I would suggest you disable the serial write uh, so you don't have issues later on. But what happened, uh, as soon as I went ahead and plugged these in and reset the chip, the um, serial port, even if I had, I had transmit plugged into it, the serial port stopped working. Uh, and I don't think it's a big issue, but uh, just in case, you might want to just uh, comment that line out, uh, which is the serial output, I believe. Let's check. So let me go back over my desktop. So the the line I'm talking about right here is a serial begin. So if we just comment that out, uh, it'll keep the uh, the serial port from being active. Also here, serial print line, we'll comment that out. Anything that has to do with the serial output, uh, just go ahead and uh, comment it out. So, so you can uh, concentrate on using GPIO 1 and 3. So as we say that, I was looking at the diagram for the uh, GPIO, uh, for the ESP12E. And this, uh, this is the chip that I was using for the, uh, the build uh, this past week. If you notice, GPIO 1 and GPIO 3 are listed here as TXRX. And those are your FTDI programming pins. So if you have your chip programmed um, for the basic uh, use uh, on Cayenne, you can basically just unplug your uh, your uh, serial connection and use those as GPIO ports. So we go to let's go to our Cayenne desktop. So as you can see, I now have GPIO 1, 3, and 4 listed here. And I went ahead and tested them. And they work uh, just like any other input-output pin. And click, click, and click. So all three GPIO pins are working. Now I've had this system on for about three or four hours and I've gone through multiple tests to make sure that the chip doesn't actually reset itself and I haven't had any issues. So just to go through the actual uh, configurations, it's, it's integrated GPIO for the select and this one's GPIO 1 or channel 1 and then the second one is GPIO 3, channel 3. Uh, this was a problem for me as well when I was building some of my earlier controllers. I didn't have enough pinouts, and now I can use those for basic functions. So 
So when we talk about the different bus speeds uh, between I2C and SPI, you're looking at about a double, uh, <clears throat> a double up in speed when you're using the SPI. Uh, it's still a serial interface. Uh, there are some drawbacks to using it, which is one would be that you have to use a four-wire uh, connection to the devices that you're uh, controlling. Uh, the, the I2C uses only two wires, uh, but it uses a stop bit, which means that the controller is not um, a full duplex. It's, uh, you can't send the information back and forth at the same time is what it comes down to. Uh, when you use SPI, when you have the MISO MOSI connected, you actually have two streams of data which are going past each other on a two-way stream. So that's one of the good things about using the SPI. But I don't think these chips are, are made for that type of connectivity because they are, they are small, they are powerful, but I don't believe they'll be able to drive uh, many more than three devices when it comes to using the SPI connectivity. As for the I2C, it's slower, it does have a stop bit, and you can control multiple devices depending on what your address is on each one of them. So it all depends on whatever functionality you're trying to achieve. So I'll go ahead and put this article in the uh, in the comments section and I just wanted to review that because it, it it's kind of important if you have a system that requires more than the actual pins outlined uh, on the ESP 8266s. So if you have any questions, uh, please do comment down below. And if you like the video, please do select the like button. Take care and see you later.